We're on your side with new research looking into how screen time is affecting our kids. One in four children are entering school for the first time with some sort of deficit or delay that can get in the way of learning. We're talking about language, communication, motor skill, and socio-emotional problems. If the problems are big enough, the child is just simply not ready for school. So we have three things to know about this tonight. Thing one, uh, this new research was published in the Pediatrics Journal of the American Medical Association. They surveyed more than 2,400 parents. They looked at the screen time of children ages 24 to 36 months. Then they looked at how those children were hitting their development milestones when they were at 36 to 60 months. Thing two is what they found. Those two and three year olds were on screens more than two hours a day. Pediatric experts, by the way, say it should be no more than one hour a day. So the average time was actually twice the amount. The kids who spent more time on screens were more likely to have delays in those skills we just mentioned a moment ago, language, social, motor, etc. Researchers say they want this research to be used to encourage families to develop media plans to manage screen time. But thing three, there is one caveat to all this that's important. Researchers say in some cases it is possible that children with these delays receive more screen time to help deal with challenging behaviors. For example, toddlers who struggle with self-control sometimes receive more screen time than those without difficulties. So why is all this happening and what can we do about it? We asked Dr. Michelle Bankson, a neuropsychologist. If we really want to break it down and, and make it so that parents understand what we're talking about is their kids motor development, their problem solving skills, their communication skills and language, as well as social development, which is just as important of a need for our kids. Which we're seeing that result then when now we're hearing that, you know, one in four or more are not prepared then to go to school. Yes. Which yeah. is really eye opening. So what is the what are these screens doing to the developing brain? Do we know? Well, in essence, basically what it's doing, Jamie, is kind of numbing our kids out. It's not making our kids think for themselves. They're just being entertained, kind of like when we go to the movies or, you know, we turn on Netflix. But what's happening is that the kids then aren't put in situations where they're having to be creative, where they're having to figure things out. They're just really kind of numbing their brain. And so we need to get back to having good, healthy boundaries in terms of what we allow our kids to do and what what we let our kids see us do as parents. Yeah, talk about that a little bit because obviously we're modeling this, aren't we, a lot for our kids. We are. We are. We are so tied to our phones, to our tablets, watching TV, and so our kids watch us. So it's one of those issues where we have to think about it's not just what we say, it's what we do. So we need to let our see, let our kids see us, for example, put the phone down during dinner hour. So for parents, what are the signs that perhaps they're getting too much of this screen time and that some of these developmental delays may be showing some early signs? What, what should we be looking for? Yeah, one of the things that we really need to be looking for is difficulty with our kids fully paying attention. They get distracted easily. And we can also be looking at their behavior. And so when you see a lot of behavioral outbursts, whining, tantruming, that might be an indication mm. that they're spending a little bit too much time in front of the screens. Uh, can there you, are other explanations as well, but that's one of the first things that I always look at. Can, can you turn that around? I mean, here we are talking about two and three and four year olds. I mean, this isn't permanent, is it? We can still turn this around if we're worried about some of these things? We can still turn it around. And part of what we want to do then is really assess how much screen time are they getting. That study showed that the kids that were at greatest risk are those kids who are getting two hours or more of screen time a day. Well, that's a lot. In my private practice, I always tell parents, you really want to try to limit it to 30 minutes. And then they ask, well, what else are we supposed to have our kids do? <laughs> Things like play in a sandbox, build with blocks, color, paste and cut. You know, those kinds of things that we did before we had electronics. But those are the things that are necessary for our kids' brains to be engaged and fully developed so that then they're ready to start school. Michelle Banks, a neuropsychologist. Michelle, great information. Thanks for joining us. It's my pleasure. Anytime. So you have a comment, uh, a story, a question. Maybe you have some input on that. How do you handle screen time at home? Just email askjamie at wbtv.com or use the hashtag OISTonight on social media.